What's up my detailing people? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to go from a part-time to full-time detailer. Let's talk about it. Wayne, how long have you been in the detailing game? Two years. Yes, sir, Two yes, sir. Two years. Two years. Flew by, man. How long did it take for you to become full-time and how did that go? Full-time, I say it took me about, I would say six months I went full-time. But um, I, was, I was hitting it very aggressive. I could have went full-time sooner but I was still holding on to vending and trying to juggle both at the same time, but that was a big conflict. It just didn't work. Uh, so you gave up on vending? You sold that? I slowly, I slowly uh, was selling it and doing it at the same time. And then it just came to a point to where I even left some vending machines. Some people got blessed with some. I left it um, just to stay sane because it was just too much. And um, I would say how I became full-time so quick was the fact that of how aggressive I was hitting it. Um, I just went in with everything. I bought everything I needed. I made sure I was on Google. I got my business license. Um, I went aggressive on the marketing, letting everybody know from phone calls to sending out my Google reviews to the people that um, booked with me. Um, I hit up all my family and friends. So once I broadcast that, that just spread like wild, wildfire. Just. Everybody's hitting me, you do detailing? People were tagging people on Facebook. Family members was telling every fam uh, other family member, like it just, chain reaction. And what do you think brought you the most clients? Word of mouth or the cheap prices you were doing? Jeez, dang, Rez. <laughs> yeah. Both, it was both 50-50. Um, cheap prices, of course, I didn't know it was cheap at the time. Um, How much were you charging? It was 30, like 35, 45. Max was like 65 around that range i wasn't even hitting the hundreds and from from that a lot of people were booking i was getting like from eight to ten details a day just because of those prices and um what were you gonna ask also i was gonna say when you were charging those low prices is that when you were doing it full time or still part time and how did you make the difference on income because you have a family to support you know what you yeah. do? You know what it was? It was the tips. Yeah. And it was the people telling me that, why are you charging this little and spending this much time? So I would spend like five hours on a car that was paying $35, $45. And they were like, here's the extra hundred. And once this kept consistently happening, I was like, man, I'm doing something wrong. If they're going to pay this much in a tip, I could charge more. And then I started like looking at all the detailers in my area, what they were charging. And I was like, well, the work that I'm doing and they're telling me in my reviews already, already skyrocketing, I could charge more. So I just gradually increased. I think I changed my prices like four times, Rez. And remember, we sat down many times, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out pricing. So. Did that help? Oh, it helped a lot. Yeah. You, you helped structure a lot of my details, uh, packages. So yeah, it definitely helped. Uh -huh. um, when we talked about it, I think I raised it as high as 250 at the time too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Um, and I was out in all the rich areas, yeah. out in the hills, man, but I was only getting one detail every two days. But um, it worked. That you hire your prices and you have the ratings, you're gonna attract a specific customer because when you're dealing with people that got money, they're looking for the higher, highest package. You got those people and that's what you attract a lot of the time, so yeah. The one thing that helped you go full time was really focusing on a specific type of clientele? Um, I, I just say, uh, I, I would put it as I'm a shotgun. You know what I mean? I shoot it out, whoever I grab that's coming for the prices. Um, I get a variety of people. Um, but I am trying to work on getting more higher end. You know, I want to get the Lamborghinis and the Rolls Royces and stuff like that. And what I'm realizing why I'm not getting that is because I'm an interior guy. So what is that going to attract? That's gonna attract the people with kids, people that aren't taking care of their cars most of the time. So, but once I start advertising the higher end paint correction stuff, that's when I'll start getting more of those cars. So, yeah. All right, man. So what if there's a detailer out there struggling to get business? They're doing it part-time, they have a day job. What advice can you give them to get more business? Um, put your full faith and trust in the Lord. That's for one, always. And, you're gonna have to make a sacrifice. Uh, when there comes sacrifice, there comes a great reward. So when you could, you know, leap out on faith. Me, I'm a risk taker because I only live one life. Even though I had kids and I had to provide for my family, I quit my job and went and did Uber. 
everybody's like, what are you doing? You need to have a consistent job. I'm like, no, I got this vision. I'm gonna do detailing, I'm gonna do vending. Like this has to work. So you gotta take a chance. If you're not willing to leave your job, and take that chance, how are you gonna be able to see that you were able to accomplish that? So the people that are holding on to their job and still detailing, then you got this guy coming in that's coming full throttle. Everything, website, cards, marketing, ads, Google ratings, like they're all in. But you're only got, you only got this little bit of time. Once you get done with work, you're tired. You're like, let me just go ahead and just throw a post up and you know, word of mouth to do it. Like, it's not gonna work. You're gonna have to sacrifice something, so. I got you. And now that you've been in the game for a couple of years, you know the seasons. Summer, busy. Winter, slow. What advice do you have for detailers? Because, I mean, you don't want them to quit their job in the winter. Because right, there's not right. going to be a lot of jobs. What well, do you guys here, say? Here's the thing, man. There's a lot of guys out there that stay busy, just as busy in the wintertime as summer. It's really on how you market. How, you, how are you going to be able to bring in the business? Just because it's winter doesn't mean you got to stop detailing. You know what I mean? Get that canopy up, find an area you could detail and start marketing in those, um, those carpet jobs, the polistry. Um, it doesn't have to stop, you know what I mean? I feel like that's just an excuse. You know what I mean? Get in the, do them carpets, man. So the advice I can give you is your marketing, your videos, and the deals and specials that you got going on. So to sum it all up, if you believe and have faith and you're going all in, how could it fail? You know what I mean? It, that, that's my mindset. And I haven't, I haven't failed. And anything that I put my all into, like there's never been anything I've been like, well, I tried, I gave it my all and that's it. Like that's never happened. Everything that I put my all into, it's, it's, it's work. So that's kind of hard for me to answer because I don't think in that kind of way. So if anybody that's had that struggle with not believing or being scared or of starting a business in wintertime and all that kind of stuff. You got a family, this, that. What kind of advice do you guys have in the comments down below on how you guys would go about that? And uh, let's talk about it, y'all. Yeah. Hey, if you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, drop a comment down below. I appreciate you guys coming through. Y'all stay tuned for the next video.